suffer from something that I refer to as axis displacement disorder. <laughs> and an axis displacement disorder is when they believe that the axis of the earth has shifted. It somehow goes through their head and out their rear end and the world revolves around them. Uh, very good. And so, and so, so the thing is that it's not all about you. In fact, if anything, it's all about the client. This is the Inner the Buzz podcast, helping smart businesses be even more innovative. Hi, I'm Jürgen Strauss from Anovabiz, and welcome to part two of our special episode number 100 of the Innova Buzz podcast designed to help smart businesses committed to innovation to service and modern marketing become even more innovative. Yes, the trumpets are still blowing, the champagne and balloons are still flowing. Um, we have reached that magic 100 milestone and if you haven't listened to part one of this special two-part episode then please go ahead and do that there's no specific order you need to listen to it so you can continue to listen to this episode and go back and visit part one our first buzz today on this second part of the episode comes from kim doyle the wordpress chick who was on both episode number 52 and 85 of the innova buzz podcast Kim's key message was just show up and implement. So let's hear what Kim had to say. Bunch of five questions that hopefully will give the audience something to inspire them to do something awesome. So the first first one was what's the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Uh, just show up. <laughs> that, I probably said that last time, but um, y- you need to just show up because you don't, you're not going to know how to innovate or what to do unless you show up, Yeah. whether that's writing, video, whatever. Just show up. Yeah, and of course, that was another one I wanted to explore today, but we're getting a little bit short on time, I think, so we might park that for next time. Um, okay. So what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas or new products? Oh, best, uh, implementing. Every time I implement, I learn something. And so, um, you know, I, that, I don't know, it's kind of a tie because, like I said, I do consume a ton of it. I'm a reader. I'm a huge reader. And, um, you know, it's, you know, taking that and then testing it. But, mm. but it's, you know, reading is huge. And then you, you just, you got to do the work. You got to implement. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. All right, I'm not sure. Well, probably more than I care to remember times where I've read stuff and thought, that's a fantastic idea, and then I just put it away and park it. Sometimes I stumble across them again. Like, now, why didn't I ever do anything with that one? Because that's such a great idea. But you know what? I, I do that too, Jurgen, really quick. I totally yeah. do that too. I, I put notes in my phone. Um, I email myself stuff all the time. And I just, I've, at this point, I'm like, ah, I just trust. If it's supposed to come to fruition, mm. it'll happen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Um, What's your favorite tool or system for allowing you to be more innovative? Podcasting. (laughs) Okay. Great. And we'll link to your podcast in the show notes as well so people can check that out, the WP Chick podcast. Um, What's the best way to keep a project on track? You know, I, I've used every project management system, I feel like, under the sun. Um, you got to find what works for you. I'm kind of a pen and paper girl, too. I, I You know, I, again, projects probably with what you're using, uh, I mean, in terms of web dev projects and stuff, require difference. I've switched over to Asana. Um, but for me, it's, it's um, accountability works really good for me. So, like, with lead surveys, my business partner, you know, having scheduled check-ins, uh, and, a, and then, of course, just a calendar. <laughs> I, I really, I, I'm all about simplify. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's great advice. Uh, so we use Asana too, but I think, um, you know, and I, I just went through and did some housekeeping on our Asana yesterday and realized that we've dropped the ball on a number of actions there. They're not hugely important actions, but we've actually assigned them to somebody and we've um, put a date on it, a deadline, and that's passed. So I've sort of gone out to the team and said hey go into Asana and check all the stuff and I said you know this isn't this isn't me slapping anyone on the wrist because I've been doing it as well so we're all in we're all in alignment here now we all need to realign ourselves yeah and again I think it's where you can 
for me, I, I don't want something that I have to manage, to, which is funny because we're doing a web app and we're going to have to hire help, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but but I uh, tr- trust me, I already know who I'm bringing on board in, into the company. Like I've got a list of like five people to bring mm. in um, as soon as we can do that. Yeah. And one of the things I'm, I'm rediscovering and I really love is I've got whiteboards put up on, so self-adhesive whiteboards on all the doors in my office here and I kind of fill them all up. I need to rub some out so I can keep writing up. I like mapping things out on whiteboards and then um, I need to take photographs of the stuff and keep that somewhere visible, but that helps as well. And and the accountability piece is really important, so regular check-ins. Yeah, and you know what's funny is I used to be really hard on myself about, you know, accountability, like, can't you just be disciplined? And I'm like, whatever, it works. I, yeah. I so don't overthink anything anymore. I'm like, please don't make a problem where there is one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, what's the number one thing anyone could do to differentiate themselves? I'm totally going to quote Dr. Seuss here, but no one is youer than you. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's, that's what you said last time. <laughs> okay, if there's some consistency, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But really, right, there's, I don't know. I mean, there's, will there be new tech ideas and stuff? Yeah, but look at mm. content. Video, podcasting, it's like none of it's like brand new or anything, but the only thing that differentiates you is who you are and what you bring to the table. Thanks, Kim. It was a privilege to have you on the Innova Buzz podcast on two occasions, and it's always great to get your insights. Our next buzz comes from Michael E. Gerber, the author of the E Myth series of books. And of course, Michael, you heard him introducing part one of episode 100. Now, it was a great privilege to have Michael as my guest on the Innova Buzz podcast and speak about his latest book, Beyond e So you understand you're not limited by McDonald's, you're not limited by Subway, you're not limited by Starbucks, you're not limited by Apple. You're not limited by Microsoft. You're not limited by Mary Kay Cosmetics. You're not limited by what they have done. But you are blessed because they've done it. Mm. And so because they've done it, they have demonstrated you can do this anyway, Mm. in any kind of practice, in any kind of um, marketplace, with any kind of consumer, with any kind of product or service. Anywhere, anyhow, that's what I'm bringing to you with Beyond the E-Myth. That's why it's such an exciting thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is really exciting, and I think we can see that Michael is really excited by that. So I love your passion, (laughs) and I love your enthusiasm and energy behind that. So, um, Michael, this has been really fabulous. Um, I hope you'll indulge me. We'd love to ask our guests a series of short questions about innovation, and I think, you know, this ties in really well with what we've been talking about in your your thing so um yeah we'll we'll head on to the into our buzz which is the innovation round so firstly what's what's the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative you have to think out of the box which everybody says Mm. but here's the question the question that's core to innovation is what's missing in this picture the question what's missing in this picture has to be alive in you all the time yeah and it's what's missing in this picture where i'm where i'm uh, sleeping right now what's missing in this picture where i'm having lunch right now what's missing in this picture as i'm driving to work what's missing in this picture as i'm having this conversation what's missing in this picture about everything and anything Mm. and that continuous inquiry is the core seed bed for innovation yeah. Now, at the same time, what has to be a corollary of that is what I've already described, a dream, a vision, a purpose, and a mission. Unless I've created an outcome in my mind, in my imagination, that's critical. Unless I'm thinking like Walt did about Disneyland, unless I have a standard that I'm establishing called Great Co., the great growing company, mm. or whatever it might be, that innovation has no energy to it. Yeah. You understand? Unless it's being called a rise above the ordinary, yeah. um, it's not innovation, it's just making things different. That's right. Yeah. Innovation is improvement. Mm. It's improvement of what is. 
creativity is pursuing the unknown at the point at which we can then begin to innovate. Mm. So innovation isn't the clear departure. Creativity is. Okay, yeah. But creativity isn't implementable. Only innovation is. Mm. So effectively, you caught in this trap. <laughs> it's like Disney when he said to the guys in Imagineers, we're going to be doing stuff you've never done before for a reason you've never thought of before <laughs> to accomplish something you never thought possible before. Yeah. That's called creativity. Mm. Imagineers are truly in an unending process of creativity. Innovation is really the alteration of what is. Yeah. Creativity is the creation of what isn't. Okay. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> it's probably the best answer we've ever had. Distinction between <laughs> innovation and creativity, what, what you need to do. So ask the right I, questions and be curious all the time. So I love it, Michael. What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Uh, say that again? What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Um, I read mystery novels. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't read business books. <laughs> business books, just uh, they just bore the living whatever out of me. Yeah. I don't read business books. So I read mystery novels, and my mind then is free of anything on the outside. Yeah. And I'm just following this path. Okay. And this path is always a surprising path or not. Yeah, and so you have um, ideas but, when, you're, when you're following sort of a path. You don't I have ideas. I wake up in the middle of the night with ideas. <laughs> so you understand ideas come to you. It's like my saxophone teacher used to say, you don't make music, uh, Michael. Music finds you. Your job is to practice. Mm. So I practice music, practice music, practice music, which means what? I practice creating. I practice creating. I practice creating, and something happens. Mm. So something always happens. Jürgen, that's the important thing for everybody to understand. When you practice creating, when you practice mm. creating, something always happens, and it's always something you'd never anticipated. Mm. So I woke up maybe three weeks ago, and this voice, and when I say this voice, it's my inner hmm. voice, and it said, um, every life a legacy, hmm. literally that, not sort of that, every life a legacy. Now, my wife has been speaking to me about my legacy, about my legacy, about my legacy, about my legacy, and I sort of shine it on, shine it on, shine it on, shine it on, because yeah, 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 and she's determined that my legacy will live forever and so I, yeah oh, okay okay I got that <laughs> I got that yeah but I woke up with this immediate seeing this is what I call it seeing it, it's where you can suddenly see it meaning you can hear it you can see it mm. it comes to you and it came as an expression every life a legacy now if you've gone to my website at Michael E. Gerber Companies um, anybody who goes to my website, our website, my wife's and ours, called Michael E. Gerber Companies dot com, um, you'll see a, or if you received any emails from us, you'll see a phrase that says, every small business a school. Mm. So that came to me in exactly the same way that every life a legacy came to me. So today it says, every life a legacy every small business is school. Yeah. Now it's complete. Yeah. And so I, I'm yeah. saying you're gonna, your life is a legacy. Mm. Then you get to choose what it is. Mm. You follow me? Yeah, absolutely. I saw that I saw that, you know, those two together and I thought that's just beautiful. And and you know, it, it so encapsulates everything you're doing now with Beyond the E Myth for me. Right. Yes. Just, I thought you, that's <laughs> Your life is a legacy which changes the nature of the energy mm. that you pour into it. So when you say, so what inspires you, what moves you, that's what moves me. Mm. It's the sudden seeing, as I call it, of something that I've not seen before. Mm. You understand I didn't sit there and manufacture yeah. every life legacy. 
It came to me. Hmm. Now, I could say it came to me from God. I could say it came to me from this, but I'm already talking about it. Hmm. Forget about it, because yeah. all I know is it came to me. That's right, yeah. Because that it tells me this little tale of the, the blind man speaking, and he said, before I met Christ, I was blind. Once I met Christ, I could see. I don't know how that happened. I only know that that happened. Mm. So it became a really powerful message for me. I don't know how that happened. I only know that that happened. Mm. I can tell all kinds of tales about it. <laughs> all I know is I woke up at 310 in the morning um, with this voice. And I could have written it down or not, and I almost didn't. <laughs> but I hadn't not written it down, I wouldn't have it today. Yeah, yeah. I would have lost it. Mm. But if my life is a legacy, then I have to look upon those things that come to me as a critical voice speaking to that. Mm. I'm obligated to write it down. I can't just shine it on. Yeah. So I did, and now it's a living part of what we do. Every life a legacy, every small business mm. is school. And if that's true, that means yours and mine and his and hers, mm. and every single one on the planet. And what would that mean if, in fact, every life is a legacy? Mm. That means you must take your life seriously. That's right. Thank you. Beyond your comfort, beyond yourself, because the dream isn't a personal dream, it's an impersonal dream. That's right. And and I love, you know, you express it somewhere, I think it might be in the book, but around, uh, you know, having that servant's heart. I mean, they're my words, but but you had that sentiment there. And I think that ties in with this message of every life, a legacy, every, every business, a, a school, because that kind of brings it back to, you know, you're not doing it. You're not doing your business for you. You're doing it for others. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's my calling. Yeah. That's your calling. Yeah, exactly. That's what you're born to do. Hmm. Yeah. Lovely. Great answer. <laughs> so what's, what's your, do you have a favorite tool or system for improving productivity and, and allowing you to be more innovative or come up with these creative ideas? And maybe it's no. just, maybe it's just, a, <laughs> maybe it's just a pen and paper by the bedside. Uh, listen, I've already done it. I mean, uh, I've already done it and done it and done it and done it. Mm. So I've already worked that one to death. Okay. Um, you know, it's called the tools, the technology, the, the mechanics, etc. And I leave that up to there's so many people better suited to that. All I'm saying, it must be there. Yeah. And if it must be there, and if that's your calling, then your calling is to make it easy there. Mm. So that I must do it in a way that everybody can do it. Hmm. So the calling is that everybody can build a great company, and I need to create a way for everybody to do it. Now I've created a way for everybody to see it and to do it. And anybody who says yes, but, yes, but, out of here, out of here. I'm just not interested in having that stupid conversation. Hmm. You understand? It's not because you're stupid. It's just because you're unwilling to let go hmm. of this reality, which is so true. I mean, it's a universal truth. And it's so true. It's so absolutely true that anybody stands there and argues with me. And I said, what are you arguing about? White is white. Black is black. Red is red. What are you arguing about? And well, because I don't, I don't care about that. Yeah. I said, white is white. Red is red. And true is true. And let me show you how it works. Okay, show me how it works. If it works... Wouldn't it be absolutely f profoundly important that you utilize it? Hmm. But maybe like sitting there with your thumb in your ear and you're saying, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, so take your thumb out of your ear, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, take your thumb out of your ear, you put it right back. You say, wait a second, I'm, I'm a guy with his thumb in his ear. Yeah. I said, yeah, but you can't hear me. <laughs> so it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. 
for, for somebody that so said, I don't, I don't have an answer, that was a great answer. I'm saying everybody was listening to take your thumb out of here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Take your thumb out of here. Yeah, that's the best tool. <laughs> so, so what's the best way to keep a client or a project on track? Well, just keep on reminding them why they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, you have to go back to the beginning mm. every single time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you have to have a system for doing that. Yeah. And that's called the system of the five essential functions. Inspiration, education, application, implementation, continuous improvement. Inspiration is for the purposes of discovering an epiphany. Um, education is for understanding. Application is for a direct experience. Implementation is for enhancing that direct experience so that you continually apply it for the purposes of gaining more experience and continuous improvement because you staying static where you are is the death of growth. Hmm. Yeah, so it's very, very critical to understand there's a, there's a methodology, a mindset that's critical to all of this. And that's the way you keep it alive. You have to keep on going back to inspiration, education, application, implementation, continuous improvement. Did you do that? Did you do that? Did you do that? No. Well, let's find out why you didn't do that. And let's now go and try to see what we can get out of your way so you can do that. And now that you've done that, do you see why that was so important? Mm -hmm. You see you had this problem and we wanted to get rid of that problem. And so we went to work on it in a way systemically that we could then avoid getting into the same box we were in before and the reason you wanted to do that was because the problem was keeping you from having the experience that you would wish you could have and the lack of that experience meant that you're all in this travail of frustration continuously you remember the frustration <laughs> remember how you told me that that's why we're doing this yeah so let's go back again and start anew and see how we can refresh your mind so that you're able to refresh this purpose underlying everything we're doing. Fantastic. So <laughs> Michael's just, yeah, fantastic. Michael's just answered that question with a complete system for being more <laughs> productive and keeping clients on track. I love you it. You got it. Yeah. You got it. I love it. Um, so what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Uh, stop trying to differentiate yourself. That's the most important thing you can do. Stop yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. Stop thinking about it. When you focus yourself on the customer, not on what you want, hmm. when you focus yourself on the customer, which is what we've been doing here all this time, focusing on the customer, the customer who doesn't want to, the customer who doesn't want to, but really wants to, etc. When you focus on the customer, you're going to find the way to do it. And as you begin to focus on the customer, it's going to differentiate you because you demonstrating how you care about your customer. Hmm not about it being differentiated. So stop thinking about it. It's a waste of time. <laughs> Great. So that's, that's quite special advice there. Stop trying to be different. Just focus on the customer. Love it. Yeah, stop trying to be different. Just be good. Don't you just love the passion with which Michael tackled our innovation round? Thank you, Michael. It was a privilege to have you on the podcast and thank you for your insights. Our next buzz was with Ali McGill of Ashton McGill, who appeared on episode number 70 of the Innova Buzz podcast. Ali is very passionate about the topic of customer experience and designing products or services for the customer. And he states that the way you do this, the way that you make the customer the center of all you do in business is truly innovation. So what's the number one thing you think anyone needs to do to be more innovative? I really think, I, I think it's about back to assumptions. Let's stop yeah. making assumptions. One fascinating piece of research that I've come across recently is to do with children, Jürgen. And up to the age of five years old, children are, 98% of children have the capability to think divergently. That means that they can think creatively, they have a natural curiosity, they ask questions. And if anyone listening has children, they'll know the number one <laughs> yeah. thing kids under five do is ask, why? Yeah. yeah. By the age of five, the average child has asked 45,000 questions. The problem then is that they go to school 
and they become self-aware. But school, our school systems across the world reward success as opposed to inquiry. So over time, children stop putting their hands up and it's the teacher that asks the questions. And, and children stop putting their hands up to give the answer because sometimes they get the answer wrong and they mm. don't feel good about that. So they just gradually that, that divergent thinking fades away. And by the age of 20, only 2% of children, young adults, by the age of 20 can think divergently. So that's a, if you think about that for a minute, 98% of people have the capacity at age five to think divergently. By the age of 20, it's only 2%. Mm. But, but do you know what? We all have that within us. So that one thing I think that we can do that will make us all more innovative is get used to asking questions again. Think like a child. Be prepared to ask why. Don't be afraid to look, to look um, silly for asking a question. Yeah. We, need to create, we need to change that dynamic within our organizations so that we get back to being curious as individuals and curious as organizations. It will stop us making assumptions. Yeah, that's and we'll see the world in a different way. That's great advice. So, insatiable curiosity is is something yeah. that I think that's that might be jargon, but I mean I think it, it describes you know what you're saying, asking oh, questions, it. and yeah, I mean I I often um, you know the biggest breakthroughs I often have is if I see something and I think oh how does that work or why did that happen like that and you know dig into it a little more, just keep asking why why why. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And these days, I guess, I mean, I, I can't remember my reaction. I know I was very conscious when our kids were uh, in the Y age. They started very early. But um, I'm very conscious these days when I see it with kids and and have see parents reacting like, oh, leave me alone or something. And I think, yeah. oh, no, don't do that. No, encourage it. Yeah. All right. What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Um. That's a really good question. Uh, so, so the answer, I think, Jürgen, would be to stop trying to do it on my own. Uh, and, and again, that's just how we've grown up in society. I remember an old boss of mine saying, don't bring me, don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. And, and that was kind of the way of thinking back in the 90s, 80s and the 90s. However, what that does is that if you don't bring the problem and share it with others, then, then you don't get that collective... Um, capability that might solve the problem we we spend a lot of time challenging the, the problem in itself which might seem like a really long way to go around it but is the problem the right problem mm. but an underlying problem that we should be solving so my ethos is bring me problems not solutions and then let's work on it together so let's understand it and let's collectively if we really deeply understand it, then there's a much better chance that with different minds and different minds of uh, different types of people, different ages, different sex, different roles within organizations, much more diversity. I think that helps us to create better um, products, ideas, solutions. Yeah, and that's great advice. And I, you know, I probably um, have been, I don't know, conditioned or educated to take a stand of, yeah, I can fix this and the bring me the solution kind of uh, approach. But I, I'm very conscious these days of, you know, go, go get help because the people that have really succeeded and done something amazing, they've they've just been the front of something and they've got a team together that yeah. actually gets things done. So they've got, you know, yeah. All right, what's your favorite tool or system for improving productivity and allowing you to be more innovative? Uh, so there's, I guess there's two answers to this. Um, in terms of being more innovative, I, I've mentioned design thinking a few times, and if mm -hmm. anyone's not familiar with the process of design thinking, the concept of design thinking, I'd encourage them to go and research that. Google it, have a look at my YouTube channel. But design thinking really is a different way to approach idea generation and problem solving. In terms of productivity, then we use two or three apps in our business that help us to keep on top of what we're doing and keep on keep um, the process moving in the right direction. And the, the favorite apps would be Trello um, and Slack. We use Slack constantly. Mm -hmm. um, and Slack is a messaging tool, which it means that in the old days, we used to message by sending emails to each other. Yeah. And, and I just got really 
cumbersome and confusing. Slack enables us to have those conversations within within the um, within the app of Slack and to be able to track things. And to, it's just a wonderful tool that has changed the way that we run our business, both with our clients, with uh, Andy and myself in the business, and then with the people that support us. And it's, it really made life better. And it's real time as well. Yeah, it is. It mm. is. And um, I've also taken recently to switching notifications off on my phone mm -hmm. because I found that <laughs> notifications were really interrupting my train of thought or my flow or my processes. So I've, there are a couple that I've left on, but the majority of notifications are, are, are switched off on my phone and my iPad so that as I'm sitting here talking to you, my phone's on the desk, but there's nothing happening with it. Whereas a month ago, there would have been constant pings and mm. uh, that would have just, it would have taken my concentration away from what I was doing. Mm. Yeah, we use uh, we use a tool called River, which is um, Slack, okay. a Slack alternative. I used to use Slack, but we moved on to River. It's kind of does a whole lot more. Interesting. I'll take um, a look at that. Yeah, and but the beauty of that, so within our team, we virtually don't send emails anymore. So the only emails I get is when somebody shares a Google Doc with me. So yeah, Google yeah. sends me a notification of that. But even there, we've, for example, the, we have daily meetups using Zoom to, and we record those because sometimes we do some training in that. And the um, I've got it set up so that that's automatically posted to the River channel once mm. the recording's uploaded. So that's all automated. Excellent. So. Yeah, it's really great to do those tools. Mm. All right, what's the best way to keep a client on track? I think uh, I think thinking back to projects we've run over the past year and a half or so, communication would have to be the answer. Yeah. Really proactive communication, so that, that we're not again. It's it's about not assuming anything. We just make sure there's a regular flow of communication to and from the clients and they know what's going on we know what's going on if there's a problem with anything let's share it right away so that everyone's aware of it and we can collectively deal with it um, so if we're going to miss a deadline for a particular reason let's share that straight away rather than get to the deadline and, and not meet it um, mm. so that I think communication the other the other word I use often is active listening so when we're with clients it's really about deeply listening to what it is that they're seeing and if we're not sure what they're asking or what they're thinking, then we, then we just encourage our people to ask. Let's just be really clear. That, that clarity around communication is, has been essential for us and it's enabled us. Because we've had a couple of bumps where we haven't perhaps done these things as well as we could have done. So we've made, we've made a point of, of changing that and just communicating everything. Mm. That's, that's great advice. And... I mean, I've found that if you let customers know, hey, you know, things have gone a little bit off the rails here, we're going to miss a deadline or something, let them know in advance. You yeah. Tell them what you're going to do moving forward that actually builds the relationship much stronger than, you know, and, and yet a lot of people feel as though, oh, it's a loss of face or something if I have to admit that I'm going to miss this deadline. And so they kind of pretend it's not happening. Yeah. Yeah, then mm. they miss the deadline and they just right. upset the customer even more. So Exactly, yeah. So it comes back to the, <laughs> you know, what, what's the experience the customer's having? Exactly. Mm. All right. What's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Another good question. These are, these, you're making me think. You're making me work <laughs> for it today. Um, <laughs> so this, is a, this will be an interesting one. It's back to something we talked about earlier today around around the customer expectation what makes a good and a bad experience these days what makes a good experience is doing what you've said you will do and if you just reflect on that for a moment or two mm. the harvard published some research recently and they'd studied 70,000 or so customer interactions and and what came out of that study was that 84 percent of customers expect businesses to let them down 84 percent yeah that's amazing isn't it yeah, which and that's just become the norm. So if we want to differentiate ourselves from our competition or from other people doing the same kind of job as us, if, if you do nothing else than, than do what you've said you'll do and meet the expectations of your customer, client, boss, manager, whatever, 
then you're going to be you're going to stand out because you you'll develop a reputation for being consistently good at what you do just by doing all the things you're supposed to because most people don't these days mm. you know, most people if there's a little bit if there's a half an hour of work left to do to finish a client project off at 5 p.m. but they're supposed to finish at 5 p.m. most people will go home at 5 yeah. and come back and finish it the next morning and i'm not encouraging people to work overtime but but having that, just being conscious that, that thinking about things from the other person's perspective and maybe just going that extra mile, delivering what the customer, what you've promised the customer you'll do, that's going to make a difference. Mm. Yeah, in some ways that's sad, isn't it? Because yeah, it really is. Yeah, but, and, and I sometimes reflect on this when I've had a good experience and I and I walk away from that experience and reflect on what it was and and then think that, well, actually, that's what should happen. <laughs> and yeah. I think that's pretty sad that I'm kind of, yeah. you know, I feel as though I had, I've had a really good experience when it's actually yeah. what should happen all the time. But it, that's where the opportunity lies for us. It does, yeah. In our businesses. If you realise that your competitors are going to think, they're not going to think like this. The majority mm. of people don't because 84% of customers now expect to be let down. So if you and your business make a point of every time doing things well, doing things properly, then you are going to stand out. Mm. Thank you, Ali. Another inspirational, fun and highly educational episode. And another awesome Scottish accent. I just love hearing that accent. Today's next buzz was with Christy Faulkner of Womenkind, a brand and marketing company focused on marketing to a female audience. Okay, I'm ready. (laughs) Okay, good. So what's the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Listen, yeah. Love be it. curious and really listen. That's great advice. Uh-huh. All right, what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Best thing I've done is be curious <laughs> and answer. listen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not what else. I think being curious, just asking questions. Why? What if? How could this be different? How could this be better? How, you know, it's just, I, I really, I'm really driven by curiosity in a, in a big way. There's a, a, one of my favorite sayings, it's a bit of my mantra, and that is um, curios, or, or, yeah, curiosity is the cure for boredom. There is no cure for curiosity. Hmm. It's Dorothy okay. Parker. <laughs> okay, yeah. But I think curiosity is the greatest thing any, any, anyone can cultivate to, uh, to be innovative. Great, great advice. Just make, making a note of the Dorothy Parker quote. <laughs> All right, so what's your favorite tool or system for improving productivity and allowing you to be more creative then? So uh, this may sound a little wacky, but it's list making. And I well, make not at all. a I lot love lists. of lists. <laughs> <laughs> I love lists because you know what? Here's what happens. Something's in the back of my mind. I, I have some tasks I need to do at home or I need to pick up my dry cleaner or whatever. You know, just the, the multitude of tasks in our daily lives that we need to do. People we need to call, emails we need to send. If, I, if all of that is brewing in the back of my mind, then I can't, I'm not free to mm. free associate and be creative. So, um, you know, it's sort of like when you're driving in your car and your mind wanders. Sometimes that's very creative. Or, or if you're in the shower and you're just, you know, your mind wanders. And, and so you can be creative spontaneously. I find that if I make a list, then it liberates me from having to churn that thought over. Don't forget to pick up your dry cleaning. Don't forget to pick up your dry cleaning. Oh, you need to call your mother back. You know, whatever those, those nagging tasks are, if I put them down on paper, then I'm liberated from thinking about them. And therefore, I can think about other stuff. That's, that's fantastic advice. And I can totally relate to that. I don't find that uh, strange at all because I love my lists. So um, It seems so simple and, and yeah. a little bit analog, doesn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is analog, but... Um, no, I, sometimes I do lists in picture form to try and get more visual, but uh, oh. definitely get get things 
like remember the milk kind of stuff out of your head. That's right. Because then the mind can work on other things. Yes. Mm. All right. Um, what's the best way, you know, to keep a, a client or a project on track? Oh, keep I'm a project on track. good lists. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? It's so true. Yeah. Uh, I think that, um, you know, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I think it's, again, it goes back to listening, you know, mm. really checking, and this, you know, can be interpreted a lot of ways, checking in, you know, regular status, regular, regularly communicating um, what's going on, listening to, cha- you know, where it's, the world's moving so fast, so change happens quickly, so to, you know, just constantly be listening um, to your to your clients or your team um, on what's going on, you know, at any given point. Just listen, listen, listen. Never stop listening. I think it just keeps us all aware and focused and on point. I mean, you think about it. If you're not listening, you're distracted. And if you're not distracted, you're not productive. I mean, if you're distracted, you're not productive. Yeah. You're just testing if we're listening, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> That's, uh, that, yeah, that's great advice. So I like the idea of, um, you know, the regular checking in, but checking in with the intent to listen again and, and mm-hmm. what's changed and, mm-hmm. so, yeah, great advice. Yeah, sometimes it's the subtext you have to listen to mm-hmm. also. So listen, right. ask questions, ask lots of questions. And be curious. <laughs> yes, be curious. Yeah. So I think I'm a very simple woman. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Oh, wow. That's a challenging one. Mm. I really, I believe that, I mean, I I suppose it sounds crazy, but I, I really believe that we're all unique. And I think if you can celebrate your, your uniqueness and be confident about it, um, you know, there are times in my life where I've felt shame about, you know, I was a, I was a little barefooted redneck girl from Texas, and then I'm in the New York City all of a sudden, um, you know, with people who were far better educated with than me and had far more, uh, let's just say, gracious childhoods than I did, and um, I didn't, I don't think I appreciated or celebrated my uniqueness. I had a very thick Texas accent, and I was a little self-conscious about that. Um, So, you know, there are different periods in my life where maybe there's a little, and I think many people have, you know, you feel like an imposter. You feel like you really shouldn't be there. And and why is that? It's because you're not celebrating your uniqueness. So I think if you want to differentiate yourself, it's about just owning who you are and owning your experience and valuing that you have something to bring and, and something to contribute and, and just believe in that. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate you being on the Innova Buzz podcast. That was another fun and informative interview with a very clear underlying message of empathy in marketing. I think this is something that is really important these days and often overlooked by many marketers. So thanks for sharing that with us, Christy. Our next buzz today was with Kevin Kelly of Wired Magazine and the author of The Inevitable. We explored future trends in some detail. First one is what's the number one thing you think anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Well, the real challenge to innovation these days is to think differently and this is especially a challenge as we are more connected so the more you're connected to everything else the more you keep up with the news the more you are engaged with social media the more difficult it's going to be to think differently (laughs) and I think um, one of the things I find that helps me think different on a consistent consistent basis is travel it forces me to come at a different angle to things to see things from a different perspective and um so i would say my advice is um uh go to the most remote place that you can possibly imagine or afford to and think about what you might want to do to uh you know to have a business while you're sitting in this other place Hmm. that's that's a fabulous idea i love it 
All right. What's, uh, so what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Yeah, for, for, for me, you know, I have ideas sort of without, I mean, uh, the problem is not new ideas. For me, it's actually execution, actually doing them. I, had, I learned something from a uh, mentor, Stuart Brand, who said that uh, you have exactly 10 minutes to act upon an idea when you first have it or else you lose it. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so that might be just a matter of even putting in a notebook, um, making, expanding on it, doing something. So, um, so that's one of the things that I try and do is I try and act upon an idea pretty quickly. And then maybe I would say regularly after that to keep it alive. That's great because advice. I, because yeah. I, ideas are pretty easy. It's 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 executing the ideas. That's mm. different. That's great advice because a lot of the time you think of something and it's very fleeting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now you're a, a tool person, a geek, right? So what's your favourite tool or system for improving your productivity? What we used to call Elance is now called Upwork. Mm -hmm. Just basically outsource as much as you can to people who are uh, world class in it, and um, uh, you know delegate the work to others who can work on this much faster than you can around the world, and um, you can even distribute it. So basically, it's to outsource as much of the work as as possible. That's fabulous advice. I love that. Yeah, great. Um, you can find almost anything you can imagine that you want done. Um, you can find people somewhere in the world via Upwork who mm -hmm. are really, really good at it and will do it very inexpensively for you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And and do a much better job than you can most of the time Probably. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, some, sometimes it's just small little things, you know, like if I work in Photoshop a lot, like making masks and things like that. For They'll make a mask for 25 cents. I mean, it's just like, and they'll have it in, in a day. It's mm. just, it's like I could spend hours doing this. So. <laughs> That's right. I was just going to say that takes me a whole day. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. Great advice. All right. So what's the best way you think to uh, keep a project on track? Have other people hold you accountable. Hmm. Uh, sometimes this is a matter of, in, of, of involving other people in, in, in the project, which inherently will bring some accountability to it. Hmm. Um, other times, if you're kind of a solo act, is you know you can make public announcements about you know I'm going to do this, hold me accountable to having you know other people in your life involved in um, kind of helping you stick to your deadlines. Mm, great advice, accountability. Yeah, love that. Um, and what's the number one thing you think people can do to differentiate themselves? Mm. Boy, that's a really great question. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of how to summarize that. Um, obviously, I've never given this a, th a thought before, <laughs> but I, but I think, I think that. Um, I mean, first of all. I'm 100% in agreement that that's a vital thing to do, that, that that's actually the long-term goal for most people, either individually or even as a company. And um, I see it as a very long process, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm having difficulty mm -hmm. reducing it to one thing. I see it as something that will take most people individually their entire life to <laughs> figure out. Um, but I think um, maybe two things. One, one, one is to to look where you to look where you spend your time when you think you're not working mm -hmm. as as an indicator of where your true distinctiveness lies. Okay, I mean, so so if you decloak it from your professionalism and let your amateurism, so to speak, lead you, um, and you kind of follow the free, kind of follow where you do things for free, hmm. that that would be a good indicator that your distinctiveness is probably lying in that direction. Yeah, it's kind of discovering your passion. 
That's yeah, but I think we're asking about something different, and, and this is a distinction I make uh, a lot, which is I think there are kind of like three stages in most people, individuals, and sometimes in businesses, three stages that they have in their kind of their development. And the first stage is, is um, you know, uh, setting out to, to actually be being able to find things that you that you're really good at doing. Okay, mm -hmm. that you uh, that you do well, that you do better than average, that um, you are in some ways superior at. Um, so that's you know doing it well is the mm -hmm. first step, and that's a huge joy if you can find that. And then the second stage is is that that, that then is that you're not only doing it well, but you have some passion about it, right? That that mm -hmm. you love doing it. And and for most people, if you can get those two things, where yeah, I'm I'm really good at this. And I love doing it. Okay, they think that's that's the hype, but it's actually not. There's actually a third one. Mm. The third one, which is I thought where you were going. The third one is um, because anyway, oftentimes people when they get to the second stage, they're suddenly flooded with um, a lot of opportunity because they're they're doing things they're really good at and they love doing it. And so they have all this work, and the and and the third stage comes when you realize that. Um, it's not just that the real true state of happiness, maybe you call it, is in doing things that you're really good at, you love doing, but only you can do. Hmm. That's the distinctiveness. And so um, if you can get there, then suddenly um, you're really golden because then – the issues of competition melt away. That's right, yeah. The issues of, of ease, anxiety, all those kinds of things vanish because you're the only one who can do it. And interestingly, your best work will be done there hmm. because you, it's only you. And you're kind of like the number one at that point because there's literally you, this is the only thing you can do. Only you can do it. And so um, um, that that's a, that's a long journey. And that's what I... So it's not just your passion because that's the second stage. It's, mm. it's the distinctiveness, the, 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 the true individual genius, so to speak, that everybody has. And it's arriving at that that's very, very challenging. And that's why I was suggesting it's um, that you look to where you're going when you're not professional as a way mm. to kind of think about w where that distinctiveness might be. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's fabulous. That's kind of a total framework to determine what makes you unique and, and how to actually arrive at that, even though it may take many people their whole lives. So thanks for that, Kevin. Some great advice there from Kevin, and it was wonderful to have him on the InnovaBuzz podcast. Execution, it's critical. Another theme that we're hearing many times in this series. So as he points out, often ideas come but you have 10 minutes to act on an idea or you lose it so that would mean typically writing it down in order to plan the first actions to turn that into a reality and execute today's next buzz was with phil singleton author of or co-author of seo for growth we discussed a smart holistic approach to search engine optimization by focusing on content, on information, on education and serving your audience. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So what's the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? I think, I mean, my personal opinion, I think, um, just taking action. I think a lot of people, especially the people that are like listening to podcasts, they're, they're, we're, these are already the folks that are kind of in there and getting it and doing it. But I think a lot of people think to some extent how I did, but, but you know, I, once I took that plunge out into Asia, I really kind of gave me the confidence to think, Hey, I can pretty much do anything I put my mind to. Hmm. Um, but in, you still get every once in a while, one of these things like, gosh, would it be nice to start my own podcast someday? Or would it be nice to start, you know, my book, that would be such a nice, you know, career bucket list type of a thing to do. Um, and I thought this, when I joined the Duct Tape Marketing Network three years ago, somebody dropped the book that they wrote as a group project in that network. And I was like, God, I'd love to do this someday in the next 10 years. <laughs> Lo and behold, I had my first bestseller in six months. Yeah. 
just because I took action on it, somebody gave me an opportunity, I jumped right on it, and it was like not nearly as hard as I thought it was. Think some people start starting your own website project. Man, I just jumped in and said, you know what? I'm going to figure this front page thing out. Of course, I don't even think that's around anymore. But <laughs> so, I mean, is that I don't know if we'd call that innovation or not. To some degree, it is. It's it's thinking about something, thinking about an opportunity, figuring out a way to kind of monetize it or do something in a way that benefits you, and then actually taking action on it and not thinking about it as one of these things. Like you hear these guys, well, I've had this idea to do something. Well, dude, the way that works right now, like when I was in, when I was a uh, uh, 20 years ago or whatever it was, when I got out of school, it was impossible to do side hustles and gigs the way it is right now. You know what I mean? Hmm. Now you could literally go to all these places and, and launch a business idea with for pennies on the dollar because you got all sorts of people that will help you on the cheap. Um, so that would be my first thing is just to, to when you think about things in terms of being innovative or news, new ideas, don't be afraid to like act on them because if you don't, without action, there's nothing. Nothing right, so. happens. Yeah, that's that's great advice. And and a lot of people overthink things and procrastinate and want to perfect something before they put it out in the wild. Um, so effectively, they never take action and nothing ever happens with it. So I think that's great advice. Yeah. All right. What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas or new products? <laughs> it might be the same answer. <laughs> It's pretty similar, although if I had to pin down something that really helped, I mean, I was so zeroed in with the SEO blinders for a number of years that, you know, I, we mentioned how Google kind of went out and started expanding things, and I kind of saw that they were grading a greater, you know, universe of marketing signals. Um, so then I went, for me, what really opened the doors uh, was kind of getting involved with duct tape marketing, and that's when it, they, he really, you know, it's the approach of, figuring out your ideal customers and kind of building everything around that, those people. So um, I think that that approach of kind of looking at, at problems or solutions or things um, from the way people are the ideal person, or whoever it is, and then trying to reverse engineer that. Cause that's really what I've always done with SEO is, Hey, don't just try and build something and game it. Let's figure out how people are searching for it and then build content around the search activity versus doing it after the fact. Mm. And that's the way a lot of marketing is done right now, right? Let's figure out who the ideal client is. And instead of just randomly creating client, let's go interview these folks and figure out what it is they really like and then just create content around those folks. And then everything else kind of builds around it. So that kind of approach, I guess, has really changed the way I think about things is if there's a new product or a new service, let's really think about the problem that we're solving and the people, especially the people that you know, you're trying to solve it for, and then work backwards from that. And that, I think, is, is, um, is new for me anyway. I think it's helped me think about a lot of different things. If I'm going to undertake a new project or a new side hustle myself, um, I'm always kind of thinking it from that lens. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. And I think thinking of the ideal client and putting together a real deep understanding of what their expectations are, what their needs and problems and what, they, what they're looking for, and then reverse engineering. I think that's really good. And it's something that dawned on me recently because I was doing a presentation at a, a retreat we ran in Thailand about this nice. very thing. And it, it dawned on me that, um, you know, and we were doing an exercise where we were working with the business owners to, to find their ideal client. And I realized that you can use this model for everything. So if you're looking to build partnerships, you can do this ideal partner exercise, which essentially is the same thing. So what's a partner going to be looking for in another partner? And then reverse engineer that and figure out, you know, um, who's a good fit for you and what kind of things do you need to be giving them to warm up the relationship so that you can start that uh, partnership journey. And likewise for suppliers, and then it dawned on me that you could actually turn it right around and do wow. one, yeah. do an ideal client exercise on yourself as oh, yeah. something for you know the suppliers to work on, and then go to your suppliers and say, "Here's my needs and my expectations and my frustrations and my fears, and here's how I like to consume stuff, and this is the sort of thing I look for online, and so on." So you've got all this information. So let's see what you can deliver. So yeah, exactly. good. so yeah, and and I know that duct tape marketing is a because going back to when I first started this whole um, ideal client stuff, duct tape marketing was one of the the models I really worked this off. So 
that's definitely great. Yeah, I mean, it definitely worthwhile. changed because again, I came from finance and then I got into SEO and I got that, like, a technical thing and it really just kind of opened my eyes up to kind of, I guess, what, you know, obviously folks like you have already kind of been doing for a while. But, um, but yeah, once you kind of figure out that piece, it's like, let's just not think of something because it's cool and then make it and hope people <laughs> yeah. will buy it, right? It's like, you know, focus on, on, on the folks and the solution and then work back. And then that can be, like you said, can you use anywhere. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, what's your favorite tool or system for improving your own productivity? My own productivity. I mean, um, the one doesn't really come to mind, although mm. I will say, I will say, I think products and tools, especially when you're doing, really, I guess anything right now, I'm thinking in terms of an agency or an SEO service providers, we're always constantly looking for something that's going to help us, but it can't be a marginal benefit, right? Yeah. And that's what a lot of the new things do. They're helping you save or make 10% more. If I some, I'm always looking for things that are like no brainers that maybe are, you know, bring in 10 times what they can bring versus just that. And I think being able to make sure that you don't go after each little shiny object because there's we're, as marketers and the way this you know, inbound marketing is evolving. I mean, there's just tons of new tools being thrown at you all the time. Right. And everyone's trying to leak exactly, yeah. each other and it's like, which one should I try? And then you get invested on the onboarding and that kind of stuff. So it's almost like just being your best productivity tool is you making sure that you don't get sucked into the next <laughs> yeah. shiny thing. Right. <laughs> That's Having right. Some discipline. Yeah. Um, well, but I'm always on the lookout, and this again, it, it could be a group. So part of my productivity answer would be, you know, having discipline yourself, not to go after shiny stuff, but also be a member of groups of people or, or masterminds or whatever it is. Um, I have to again be a part of duct tape. There's 120 of us. We all kind of do the same stuff, and a lot of other people are always testing other things out. And then you're in this group that you're on, where whatever it is, and you're kind of sharing that idea. So being able to, you know, rely on other people that are actually using stuff in the field in your realm or whatever is going to be hugely valuable, right? Because if somebody in your group that you trust says, man, I tried this and it is awesome, then you're going to try it versus, you know, feeing something or getting sold yourself because somebody else, you know, got in somebody else's marketing funnel or something and, hmm. and believed something that was coming down. So, you know, that's I, how, how it, I think helps me because I'm relying on, on a little bit myself, my own discipline, but also listening from other people that have been guinea pigs and then making, and then making choices on, on new solutions that way. And that's really helped me quite a bit. I mean, I've actually got a few tools out there that I think are, you know, been able to, for us to be able to add a ton of value to our clients for relatively low amount of cost. And that's what we're all trying to do right now, right? Not just marginally mark something up because then it ends up being um, not very profitable. All right. Um, and what's the best way to keep a project or a client on track? Um, you know, we, my biggest weakness is that I'm, I'd say I'm a perfectionist or something like that, but I'm always, I'm like kind of at heart, kind of a yes man. I, I've got to take a lot of pride in my work and I always want to make people happy, right? Um, and that's just kind of how I've approached business is that you want to try and keep your reputation as high as possible. The problem with that is uh, sometimes when you're in any kind of space, at least in the business that we're in or I'm in, um, if you start saying yes off spec without charging, you cheapen yourself immediately one and two, you start sliding down this slippery slope of um, things because you just all of a sudden said yes to one thing. Why aren't you saying yes mm. to this and that? Right. So, so the best way I keep the stuff on track is really to try and document that front end and have a blueprint or a plan. And this is the one thing I think I'm probably really good at because there's other pieces of the parts of our business where I, I probably, you know, all for all these years I've been doing it, almost kind of still run my business in some ways as a solopreneur. Um, but when it comes to what we're going to deliver to the client or a project or something like that, I'm really, I think, pretty strong about trying to treat every project like we're building the house and get those architect blueprints and people have sign off on them and make sure that they're set in stone. And then when we commence doing the project, any change is treated like a change order. And then all of a sudden, it sounds like you're being strict, or, but you're really kind of just making sure it goes on. All right. Well, the fifth question in there, we got sidetracked there a little bit. The fifth question is, what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Well, this is probably one of my favorite, but, but I, I think, the, again, and the one thing you asked the question, can you do to differentiate that? And I think that's just to take action to differentiate yourself, right? Because um, I'm going to give you an example of myself. I mean, I, I come, I'm truly, I would consider myself a true introvert. And I mean that by like, 
not like I'm shy or anything. It's like when I go out and talk or if I'm having a sales meeting, it drains me like emotionally and actually physically, right? I think that's the nature of being an introvert. So I never really got out there and put myself out there, did interviews, did podcasts. You know, I didn't really blog until a few years ago. Um, everything was kind of just behind the scenes and kind of a more technical person. But what, what I think you have to do now and I see the way this works myself is you got to really get yourself out there and prove that you're an, an authority in your niche. And the more you can do that by, you know, posting content, getting involved, um, trying to write books and, and, you know, interview people and do podcasts and these kind of things. Um, the other guys aren't doing it. And the, the sense that you can do it and show your action, it looks, you start to raise your, um, your position basically in your, in your niche and you work from being not an influencer to becoming a, a micro influencer to maybe becoming an influencer in your tribe or your group. And we all, no matter how big or small they are, we all, you know, we all have got a group of people eventually um, that we know that, that look to us for some type of advice. Is it 10 people? Is it a hundred people? Is it a thousand people? Is it a hundred thousand people? Um, but that really, that part of it, just taking action to kind of look at yourself um, as, or to, to have that goal, to be uh, a looked on as an authority in your niche, I think is something that everybody should, should look to do in the thing that they're going after they're doing in their life or their career. And I've kind of made that the bullseye for myself, right? So I'm it's okay. Thanks, Phil. Great recommendations. I love the book and highly recommend this to anyone who is into business, in fact, and who runs a website and is interested in educating their audience, which should be everybody in business. I love the book, and this interview just reinforced those key points. Our next buzz today comes from Mike Morrison of The Membership Guys and The Member Site Academy. He talked to us about the secrets of running successful membership sites, about engaging an audience and building a community around that audience. Let's do it. Yeah, great. So what's the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Uh, you need to actively engage with your audience and encourage and embrace their feedback. So many people see feedback and see comments and emails as a negative or something to be minimized. Encourage and embrace this stuff. As an entrepreneur, your one role is to solve problems. That's it. doesn't matter what title you call yourself in your business card or your website or anything. You're not that. You are a problem solver. Each and every one of us is in the business of solving problems. And you can't provide a solution until you understand the problem. The only way to do that is to listen to your audience. So it's not a particularly sexy answer, I don't think, but... Find right. ways yes. to continuously and actively engage with your audience and act on the feedback they give you because those guys will point you in the right direction most of the time. Well, I think it's a great answer because, uh, you know, and it, it's consistent with what we were saying earlier about the magic bullet kind mm. of approach that, you know, you actually have to put in a little bit of work. Now, there's nothing really difficult about talking to your audience and engaging them and taking feedback on board and maybe asking a bunch of questions to clarify things and get a better understanding. And it's amazing what that will do for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, those guys will be a bottomless pit of ideas and inspiration. And, you know, yes, you will get some people who are annoying and you will get, <laughs> you know, you will get to a point where when you've answered the the same question like for the 56th time and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, it's part and parcel of doing business. For the most part, these guys are going to fuel ideas and innovation and product development and content for as long as you'll listen to them. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, so what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? I would probably say our Facebook group. Again, very, very it's simple. But when yeah. we... Yeah, when we decided that uh, we knew we were going to set up the academy, but we also knew that we couldn't just stop what we were doing and just be doing that. So, you know, as we were bringing everything together, we set up a Facebook group just so we had somewhere to send our audience and somewhere to engage with them, listen to them and stuff like that. And I would say that the interactions in there have probably fueled most of the uh, ideas or the prioritization of our 
free content or paid content. It's given us new ideas that we wouldn't have thought of in terms of uh, what to add into the membership, and it continues to, to do so. And it's got all sorts of other benefits from a marketing point of view as well. Mm, yeah, great advice. And, and also, you know, it's part of building that community, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Mm. What's your favorite tool or system for improving your productivity and allowing you to be more innovative? Asana. Mm-hmm. I, I, up, until, up until this year, like, I'm a, a curmudgeon, even though I'm like, massively techy. You know, we do the sales, we do the marketing, all that sort of stuff. The root of it, the foundation of where that all started was building websites, programming, coding, yeah, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. But I, I have that um, contrary thing where like – for the last like seven or eight years, my to-do list and my project management has been a single Google Doc that every six months I would just update the date of and the title. So I was just <laughs> to, to-do list. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd be in kind of February 2015 and I'd be working from a document which is like to-do list, January 3rd, 2014. Um, and yeah, I was kind of forced into switching over to Asana um, by Kali, my other half. She's a bit more organized <laughs> and a bit more pragmatic than I am. And I love it. It kind of runs our life and our business, especially now we're expanding the team. Um, it's it's critical to what yeah. we do. Yeah. Yeah, I've been an Asana user for quite a long time and I sort of got a love hate relationship with it, but but yeah. you know, it's still for our purposes it's still the best out there and they have been doing quite a bit of work on it recently and upgraded and just recently they've done a, a big update that's improved the speed quite dramatically as well, which is useful. Yeah, I've noticed that. Hmm. Very cool. All right. What's the best way to keep a project or a client on track? Um, again, kind of Asana and using their, their templating um, system for us is, is, is good. It's not as robust as it could be, you know, but we worked around it. Um, in terms of keeping things on track, you know, we obviously we don't work with clients now when mm. we essentially just have one mammoth project. Uh, but we, we kind of <laughs> almost developed our own hybrid customized version of a combination of Kanban and the Eisenhower decision matrix. That's just one for people to look at with the door away. We've yeah. kind of developed that as our um, means of prioritizing and deciding what stuff to work on in our project and to keeping us focused on you know, on, on the tasks at hand and also to, you know, dividing responsibilities. So we've kind of, we, we, we took that offline. We figured that for our regular planning meetings and review meetings, it's better to switch the computers off and just hit the whiteboard where we've got our Kanban, Eisenhower, whatever we want to call it mm. up there. Um, and we pull out the post-its and uh, yeah, that kind of, that informs, what we're going to be working on on a quarter quarter basis. Yeah, yeah. So the Eisenhower decision matrix is at the important, urgent, not urgent, not yeah, important. Yeah, we tweaked that. Yeah, we yeah. tweaked that. We tweaked that based on speed and impact. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, we have fast and high impact, which is obviously no brainer stuff. If you can do stuff in five yeah, minutes, yeah. that's going to have massive impact. So you have fast and high impact, slow and high impact, uh, fast and low impact. And then obviously we just don't have slow and low because yeah. you shouldn't be doing that stuff. Um, and then, yeah, we, we bring in the Kanban by like that decision matrix stuff is our pipe. We use that for our pipeline. Um, so our, our starting point, and then we pull ideas from that and we progress it into to do in progress and then done uh, mm. using kind of the Kanban stuff. Kanban, so it yeah. works really well. Like, mm. It's simple. But I'd tried all sorts of, uh, you know, we used to, used to kind of do agile development when we were um, working with the agency. And it just, it, it just seems like more work goes into um, maintaining the approach to work mm. than goes into the actual work. So, yeah, this, this works for us. <laughs> mm. Yeah, great advice. I like that. Um, all right, so what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? I think you need to be laser-focused on your niche, or if you're listening in the U.S., if you insist on saying it this way, niche. Um, <laughs> I have had countless arguments about that. Most of our audience are U.S.-based. Anyway, 
laser, laser, laser focus on your niche. I see so many people niching down, and then when they start to gain momentum, they go broad. They move to the middle. They get mm. more general and more generic, and they lose focus. So, you know, they'll start out by really carving out a place for themselves as the go-to expert on Facebook or the go-to expert on online courses or memberships. As soon as they start seeing some success, they want to start talking like they're Gary Vaynerchuk. And Mm -hmm. their Mm -hmm. content becomes less and less about the thing that they're known for and more just pontificating about whether or not you should hustle 18 hours a day. And it's the same tired, boring old rubbish. You need to laser focus on, on your niche. A huge, huge part of our success has been unflinching commitment to our niche. You know, when we very, very first started, we would say, um, you know, tips and advice for memberships and online courses. So an online course is a type of membership, but it's mm. recognized as its own kind of thing. And even just that, even just tightening that up to make it just about memberships, we turn away big name guests for our podcasts if they're not totally on point. We turn down endless opportunities because it would sway just a degree or two away from memberships as a focus you need to get laser focused and be unflinching in that focus long term if you want to stay the course and differentiate yourself differentiate yourself from everyone else who is just trying to occupy that middle lane thanks mike wonderful to have you on the podcast and yes the power of focus and being a problem solver absolutely vital and a great message to share with us The last buzz that we're going to share with you today on this special episode of the Innova Buzz podcast was with Nina Radetich of Radetich Marketing and Media. Nina's journalism background gives her unique experience to craft both quality content for her audience and to use video. Her use of video is excellent, so go check it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Shut off your brain and move. <laughs> Get out, take a walk, take a bike ride. Just shut off your brain, shut off the phone, and get moving. That's great advice, and, and I actually do quite a bit of that. I noticed recently because I'm, uh, I've been off the bike for six weeks so I'm unfit and not able to keep up with all my buddies so I tend to be riding alone a lot and that's where I get my best ideas. Me too. I, you're a road biker. I, I heard in one of your podcasts that you were you were talking about biking so you're a road biker? Uh, mainly road biking. I do um, mountain biking as well but mainly road. Nice. Mm. Okay. Love it. <laughs> all right what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Or new products? I think, what is the best thing I've done to develop new ideas? Again, hopped on the bike, gone for a walk, uh, recorded anything in my iPhone that I came up with while there and, and in the subsequent shower and, <laughs> and whiteboarded it all out, mapped it out so that I could get what was in my brain out on paper. Yeah. That's great. So you record, so, so if you get an idea on the bike, you record it on the iPhone? I try to, or I will pull over and uh, write down a note. I'll use the notes feature on the iPhone. Okay, yeah, because I probably need to do that some more. I was, <laughs> I was out recently, and I think I got to five ideas, and I, I kept thinking, okay, that's five, and so I could just kept reciting them one, one after the another while I was riding to make sure I... I uh, remembered them, but then I I got to five and I thought, oh, that reminds me, there's another one. And now I'm up to six. (laughs) It's hard to remember. And, and, you know, they're fleeting. So Mm. so at least for me, I mean, sometimes they come to me. I I also uh, problem solve when I'm walking, running or riding. Mm. Um, So, so, you know, solutions to problems come to me as well. So I do, I have found myself pulling over a lot of times to either record something, my voice or to write it down in the notes. Mm. Great advice. All right. What's your favorite tool or system for improving your own productivity and allowing you to be more innovative? 
I love teamwork. I'm a big fan of teamwork. It's a project management tool, but teamwork, if I put all the tasks in teamwork, I don't have to worry about the details. It reminds me of the details so that my brain can be free of the details so I can think more big picture. Hmm. Yeah, great. So it's, it's always good to have something where you can put the information, get it out of your head and then have it easily accessible and also have it remind you to follow up when it's time to take action, right? Mm-hmm, for sure. All right, what's the best way to keep a client on track or a project on track? Good old-fashioned nagging. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I think, um, <laughs> I think the best way to keep a project or client on track is, um, is through clear communication and giving them an understanding of, of what's at stake if we don't stay on track um, because that puts skin in the game for them as well. Hmm. Yeah, communication is so important, isn't it? Huge. And clear communication. Now, having said that, I think having a clear system to follow, which you have, is really important. And the other part of your clear system is understanding who your ideal client is. So if you pick the right client to start with, you've probably done 90% of keeping the project and client on track already. <laughs> Yeah, and, and to the, the communication point, helping them understand what you're doing. Hmm. This, digital marketing is like Greek to most business owners. It really is. And so and 99% and of the, the companies out there don't take the time to explain what they are doing and why it matters to the client in layman's terms. And I call on the journalism background to do that a lot, Jurgen. I call on the take a complicated concept and boil it down into two sound bites so that you, the viewer at home, can understand it. I do the same thing with my clients. I help them understand what these digital marketing concepts are, why they matter for their business, and what we are doing on a regular basis. So transparency and communication are paramount, and it keeps the client engaged, and it keeps the project moving forward. Hmm. That's great advice, and I like that you say, you know, you explain to them why, you know, why it's important to them. Mm-hmm. So... All right, so what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Just be authentic. I mean, don't, don't try to emulate others. I, I Don't be afraid to, to, to show who you really are. Um, you know, for, for, for me, that's that maybe that's allowing a little sarcasm or, you know, um, calling on my background as a journalist and a, and a storyteller in a digital age. I mean, just 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 trying to be who you are and embracing who you are and and being fully authentic about it is the best way I think you can differentiate yourself. Thanks, Nina. That was some great advice. I hear you about the exercise. We must find a way to go on a bike ride together sometime. As I said, go check out Nina's video channels her use of video is really awesome I hope you enjoyed that special episode of the Innova Buzz podcast as much as I enjoyed putting it together it's in two parts and if you're listening to this right now and haven't heard part one go check out part one you can find the notes to the combined episode at innovabiz.com.au forward slash 100 that's the d- numerals 100 all as one word, so in overbiz.com.au forward slash 100. We'd love you to leave us a comment under the blog post. What did you find most useful on this? Um, happy birthday wishes, um, anniversary, whatever it might be. But certainly looking forward to getting feedback on the content so far in the first 100 episodes now in the next episode we're going to return to our one-on-one interview format and we'll soon be featuring more of our special model the master's series so if you haven't already done so head on over to itunes or stitcher or pocket casts and subscribe to the innova buzz podcast so you'll never miss a future episode now if you haven't left us a review already then We'd love to hear your feedback. We always welcome feedback and reviews because that's how we know how we're doing and also how 
we know what content we should be looking to provide for our audience. So if there is anything you'd like us to cover, questions you want answered on a future Nova Buzz podcast or guests you'd like us to interview, please send those ideas to us. Until next time, I'm Jürgen Strauss from Inova Biz, and remember, be awesome and keep innovating. Mm-hmm.